What's up guys, GrimXV here. Today's video is covering the Q&A that took place with Jeremy Bearson on March 9th, 2024. For those that missed it, the arena hosted the Q&A and invited Sherlock you and I to cover community-based PvE and PvP questions respectively. So huge thank you to the V Arena team for putting everything together. Not only that, but also to Jeremy for joining us and to Sholo Q who came with some really awesome questions. You can find links to Sholo's and V Arena's channels in the description below. Now, the original Q&A lasted over two hours and covered about 61 questions. So while we will hit the important bits and touch on some of the others, this video won't cover everything. But fear not, for those interested in watching the full VOD, you can find it on the V Arena Twitch channel. And I'll also be uploading an edited version to my channel later this week. I do encourage you guys to check it out if you have time, since we had some pretty interesting discussions as well. For anyone wanting to see an outline of the questions, you can find a summary containing most of them on the v arena discord all right now that that's out of the way let's dive in during the course of the interview we discussed a wide variety of questions ranging from quality of life pvp balance spell functionality and more please keep in mind that as with any other pre-release information though what i'm about to share with you could still change covering the biggest pieces of news first we now know that there'll be a fourth shard within the new in-game zone here's the clip i know in gloomrot we got the introduction of adam and that introduced a new shard is there are there any plans to introduce a new shard with the in game zone as well? Uh, yes. All right, that's pretty awesome to hear. Jeremy didn't go into any detail on this, but said we should keep an eye out on the next few dev blogs for information not only on this, but also the new Stygian crafting station. Here's what Jeremy had to say on what's to come during his closing comments. This next couple of weeks, really uh, from here all the way up to uh, release is going to be insane. Yeah, so far that's aging pretty well. For anyone that missed it, SLS dropped their release date trailer, which now has the game slated for May 8th. This came just five days after our Q&A session, by the way. Now, I won't spoil it, but thanks to the final scene of this trailer, we now have a pretty solid indication of which boss this shard will belong to. I think that revelation gives us a bit more insight on this part of the clip as well. Okay, longer question, right? There is absolutely no presence of vampires in the game, right? Other than you, like the players. Uh, and... Night Marshal, and obviously the additional bosses that are coming. Will there be ever like, will there ever be like a hub specifically for vampires or anything like that, where you can go and purchase certain items instead of just from human traders? Hmm. Mm. Next question. It's a, it's a pretty uh, good when question. I, when I hear the humming, it means that he's not gonna answer. It's just like, hmm. <laughs> That wasn't on the list. Why are you? What asking? I love about what I love about a lot of questions like this is that they're very often the answer is something very interesting that is not quite what you asked, but I but is similar and I can't quite answer. So uh, yeah, just keep yeah keep keep your eyes peeled in the future. Next up for big news is what we learned about spell passives. While we still don't know what all of them do, we now know that we'll be able to unlock all of them and that the system to unlock them will be similar to how research works in the game now. Now, for those new or just unaware, to unlock knowledge at the current research tables, you have to find different materials such as paper, scrolls, and schematics. Because of this, when the passives are unlocked, I think we can now assume that there'll be inherent benefits for each spell school rather than something you have to pick and choose. Since we get access to paper for the research tables as early as Farbane, I also asked Jeremy when the system used to unlock the passives would be introduced. He was hesitant to give a definitive answer, but did say it won't be something you farm only after all bosses have been defeated. Here's what was said. Okay, gotcha. So I assume with you saying that, that we'll also be able to access all the passives once we clear all the bosses at the end of the game? Um, yes, but uh, it, it's uh, after you do the proper work to gather the resources to unlock the things. Uh, I, I don't think it happens completely at the end of the game. I think it's more towards the later end of the game. So it's not like you finish up everything and then you start doing this. It's more like it's introduced a little bit later in. Uh, I, I don't think it's a good idea to say exactly when right now because I think that might change. Gotcha. 
Thanks to the session, we actually got a lot of clarity on how spell points work. The new spell points are tier based and are locked behind bosses specific to each school type. For example, Quincy and Clive would award chaos spell points, while Nicholas and Gorswine would reward unholy spell points. As for the different tiers, tier 1 spell points will be introduced early on, with tier 2 spells being introduced throughout the mid to late game. Tier 3 spell points will be used to unlock ultimates and will be available in varying quantities at all stages of the game. While on this topic, we did get into some discussion around imbalance between boss types for each zone and the effect this could have on the new system. Namely, the possibility of there not being enough bosses for the various school types to ensure everything can be unlocked. To this, Jeremy said, I think, I think that's yeah. been reworked a bit. Uh, I would have to like go through myself to to check out the like the actual balance of it. But when you finish Act One and you're like moving to Dunley, you'll have access to two ultimates, one yep. unholy and one chaos one. So okay. there is a balance issue in that way, I, I think. But I, I'm just not sure that it's an issue. When covering the artifacts in my video going over the 25th dev blog, I'd assumed these would be similar to the current system of legendaries with RNG modifiers for stats and or new ability animations. However, all thoughts around that have now been firmly debunked. We now know that artifacts are not only unique, meaning each artifact will have specific stats and predetermined ability alterations, but that the ability changes might affect both E and Q abilities or just the E or Q respectively, depending on the weapon. Here's what was said. Uh, next up is actually, uh, I know in Dev Block 24, you introduced the whole artifact weapons and you showcased the really cool Axie effect. Can you tell us whether or not the new weapon ability modifiers for those, if they'll affect the Q abilities as well? Um, yes, there are there are Q abilities as well. Um, they, I don't know if it's only the E on all of them. I, I've gone through them before, but I can't remember which ones uh, currently affect what. Uh, which sides it could be possible that there's ones on Q and on E or just on Q or just on E. Uh, I, I think it might be both. Awesome. And actually, this isn't on the list, but I have a kind of a follow up to that. Um, since I saw the post, I've been kind of wondering if they're going to be unique to the weapon, meaning like you'll have one. So like for the, the axe that we've seen, for example, is that going to be the only modifier for the E or is there maybe another effect for the E that we could possibly roll? Uh, per weapon, I think it's one. It, it is essentially like that is a unique like ancestral weapon that has a specific name like gotcha. it there that thing is always called let's see what's it called right i think they changed the names on them actually <laughs> but uh like for instance this one right now in in an old build is called chaos knight's warblade and just that sword is always called that that is the chaos knight's warblade Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, I like that. Why isn't it called Grimm's Warblade? In my follow-up question, I also asked about the infusions for these. Do artifact weapons have exact infusions and in stacks, or will they be random, or can we choose? I think you might have just touched on that a bit. No, they're specific. So while the new weapons won't be as flexible as I originally thought, this is still something I'm extremely excited about. This means we'll now have static farmable items to look forward to, similar to how the old GSR worked in pre bloom Ride. With names sounding as cool as the Chaos Knight's Warblade, I can only imagine what effects or stats these things have, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we're able to create whole builds centered around these items. I'm hoping the drop rate for these is actually rather low though, since haggling or offering mercenary services for the old GSR led to some of my favorite interactions. I'm gonna be on YouTube, aren't I? During Sholo's portion of the interview, she asked about the possibility of some quality of life features being added, such as the ability to craft items already tucked away in your storage containers. For those familiar, this would be something like Power World's current system for storage. To this, Jeremy highlighted the point that it could lead people to randomly dumping their loot in chests, which not necessarily everyone likes. He then went on to reveal some of the awesome changes we'll be seeing to not only the storage containers, but also the crafting system in general. For the storage container piece, he revealed that there would be a new approach to them to make it more obvious or sort of feel like it has a specific place. Here's the example he gave for this. We're not doing craft from stash, uh, but we are adding a, a lot of quality of life stuff around crafting to find a, a sort of better middle ground. Uh, there is new types of stashes uh, that are going to be better for certain types of loot and also make it easier and like faster. Like if you have a certain container, for instance, that's only for one sort of loot, uh, you just hit the button and it automatically dumps everything of that sort into that box. 
uh, okay. and it allows you to on site immediately know where all that stuff is going to be. You're just like walking by. You're like, where are my herbs? It's probably in the big herb thing that's got herbs spilling out of it. He then went on to talk about crafting. And honestly, what's coming was really nice to hear. There's nice. going to be a lot of huge improvements to the way crafting works uh, in the UI, which includes like the ability to like uh, pin like certain things uh, to like pin a recipe so that yeah. you can go around and know what you need to get from your boxes instead of having to go back to check 50 times. And uh, also things like if you have certain recipes highlighted in a crafting station, uh, it will highlight in your inventory where those are in your inventory. So you don't have to look for them. You just like see them and you click it. Or you just click the button, it just puts them straight in. We also asked about the recently announced castle relocation feature. We still don't know whether this is coming for 1.0, but we asked what sort of cost the action would have, as well as whether it'd have a window of time associated with it. To this, Jeremy said he thinks the cost will be something pretty inconsequential, but that the internal discussion on how this feature would actually roll out is still being had. He did, however, confirm that all of your storage items, prisoners, and servants will be moved to the new location instantly. Here's what was said. Will you be able to shift the entire base? Like what happens to the extra loot? Does it just end up in boxes everywhere or? Yeah, it's oh, just, yeah. it just kind of spawns with the castle heart. You move everything over, including your servants and, and prisoners and everything. You just sort of okay. like place the things down and they transfer okay. over with them. They have it set up so you can't actually transfer it until you've placed your servants and prisoners down. Because uh, oh. the risk of sort of accidentally murdering them by leaving them behind was just uh, a little bit too great. I know lately I keep talking about my hype reaching new levels, but honestly, the hype is real. One last thing I wanted to share with you is a post I spotted on X yesterday. Now, I have no clue what this countdown timer represents, but I'm familiar with and a fan of most of these titles, so let me know what you think in the comments below. And all right, guys, that's the end of today's video. I want to give another huge thank you to everyone for helping me reach my first 100 subscribers. Hitting that goal and the views I've been getting lately have honestly happened way faster than I ever could have hoped. If you're new to the channel, channel and like what you see please go ahead and subscribe it's free and really motivates me to make more content did you just pull the entire village grim no not exactly. grim no grim no grim we talked about you grim and you pulled the entire village <laughs> he is he's actually dead yo those calm for now though thank you so much for watching this is grimxv signing off Thank you.